Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. This time, we're back talking about FNAF Plus. You guys absolutely love every single video we do on this channel for FNAF Plus, and I'm very pleased to announce that today, we finally got some proper gameplay footage. And it looks absolutely insane. So frankly, I'm so excited, I don't want to drag out this intro any longer. If you're new to the channel, we cover FNAF news all the gosh dang time so if you want to stay up to date with what's going on with not only fnaf plus but also the entirety of the fnaf franchise subscribing to this channel is the best way to guarantee you'll stay up to date and if you're excited about fnaf plus hit the like button tell me your theories for the game in the comments down below what are you hoping to see in the game what characters mechanics etc and let's just hop into the video so phil felt bored one day and he's like you know what you guys have been patient, let's give y'all some footage of FNAF Plus. To be fair, his exact wording was just a bit different. More professional, he said fixing the AI for hashtag FNAF Plus is taking too long. So I'm gonna put up a small showcase for what I've been doing the past few weeks on at FNAF Plus. As a thank you for how patient people have been. A lot still left to be done, but everything is coming together very nicely. Also updated the FNAF Plus FAQ, saying what is the current state of the game? update 2 as of June 5th, 2022. The game's final visuals have been implemented. All UI styles have been added and are fully customizable. If you want more info on all the UI options for FNAF Plus, we did do a video on that already on the channel. That'll be linked down below. And the game's AI is still in the process of being tested and balanced. At the moment, there are lots of crashes and unintended behavior. After the AI is polished up and balanced, development will move forward with adding sound effects and atmosphere, menus and the endings. Interesting tidbit there, he said endings plural. Now that could be the typical, you get to night five, you beat it, you get a paycheck. Night six, you beat it, an uh, overtime paycheck. Night seven, you beat that, you know, whatever the max mode is, you get fired. Or it could be something different. A small showcase of the game's visuals has also been uploaded today. And that's exactly what we're moving on to next. So without further ado, this is our showcase. This is the office. Wow. I mean, already just looks absolutely insane. Now, we did see a bit of this office in the breaking and entering short, but this is what it's going to look like in the game. You got the Celebrate poster, of course, the signature fan. You got a figure of Mr. Cupcake. You got a figure of Freddy. Got a whole bunch of drawings, party hats, cobwebs, speakers, monitors. You know, you also have a speaker right here or a intercom. Maybe this is where that, you know, phone guy stand in is going to instruct us, but also take note of what's missing here no puppet mask and also keep track of this freddy figure so there's not actually any sound for this video so if you're like hey where's the sound there's no sound effects for the video there's no sound i promise but actually pressing play on the video this is our look at some gameplay look you got a spinning fan on the desk Ooh, what's over here, huh? Moving my cam so you can see the clock. So it looks like not only do you have a clock in the top right at all times, you can also see the exact minute you're at in the night by turning to the left and looking at this clock. You got some office rules from Freddy. Don't waste power. Don't laze around. Don't take the pens. Don't let customers inside. Don't make weird noises. Don't stain the carpets, ayo. And also don't allow refunds. And it looks like this office actually works as an office it looks like someone you know a customer could come up on this side of the window speak through the speaker and also be able to pass things in and out through this little hole you can see the clock ticking down in real time taking a look at the right side of the office now safety first zero nights since last incident hey i'm back it's going to be interesting to see if that number actually changes depending on how many times you die in the game some more drawings of chica and the cupcake absolutely terrifying Bonnie, Freddy, uh, Chica, and also Foxy peeking out from the curtains. Looks like trying to give this kid a present. Another booth right here. Uh, looks a bit different. Looks like this one's chained off, and it also doesn't have a speaker or an opening. But I think we do see... So that's how you close the doors. So you physically have to pull your cursor down. Let's go back and take a look at that. You have to pull it down and pull it back up to open and close the door. That's an awesome feature. It's a small little touch, but I absolutely love it. So you don't just click the lever, you go, you pull it down, and you go and pull it back up. And you can also see a, a bit of battery right there, a battery meter maybe. We're gonna talk about that a bit more uh, later on in the video, but that's a look at the doors. 
And I think, do we go into the cameras next? Yes. So these are the cameras. And so right now we're looking at the dining hall, aka cam 1B. This just looks absolutely insane. We're going to see what this meter does in a little bit. But right now, we'll go into cam 5, the restrooms. Again, looking absolutely amazing. Look at this. So this is what this meter does. I say meter, it's not really a meter. But you click on this and it looks like you have to physically pull this arrow to pan over the camera feed. Looks like on this side of the restroom feed, you can see a camera TV, a poster, visit the fun-filled prize corner, some light switches. But yeah, you have to physically pull an arrow, which is certainly interesting. Usually in FNAF, you know, the cameras will pan themselves. But this time, it's manual. The player has to, you know, again, click on the arrow, click and drag. But anyways, moving on to cam 1A, this is the entrance. Now, we did see this camera in Breaking and Entering. I do believe this lever gets pulled down and you can open and close the gate. I don't know if you can do that, you know, actually in the game as a mechanic. But you can see a flashing exit sign. Creepy. And now, this is one of the most interesting rooms in the game. Cam 10, the electrical room. This is not a, this is not a location, a room in the original FNAF 1. This is brand new to Plus. It also looks like you can't pan in here, so maybe some cameras you can't pan and it's just a static location where the feed is. But keep track of what this room looks like. A closed fuse box and five yellow lights on this panel. Also, Helpy saying warning, high voltage. Yeah, look, at, see it's blinking? That can't be good. But now, let's move on to Cam 9A, the West Hall. A very, very creepy hallway. Pan a little bit. We did see this shot once again in the Breaking and Entering teaser video. Just a whole bunch of drawings. You can see, you know, Bonnie, Freddy, Bonnie again, Chica. It looks like Lonely Freddy from uh, the Fazbear Fright story. And a bit more healthy safety tips. Don't run, don't yell, don't scream. We still can't poop on the floor at Freddy's. Absolutely disgraceful. Stay close to mom, don't touch Freddy, don't hit, leave before dark. And you got healthy saying thank you. So let's look at the hallway. And then we're back into the office and that concludes the video. We're not done just yet because we also got a few still images from FNAF Plus's Twitter account showing off a bit more of the game, most of which we did see in that video, but there's also a few smaller details that I want to point out. First up, this is the office. Now remember what I said about the puppet mask and the Freddy figure? It looks like the puppet mask has appeared again in this image. In the video, it wasn't there, but now in this image, it's there. Could it be like a entered scenario from Sister Location where a character takes that mask? I definitely do think that this mask has some importance in the game. You know, it's been teased too much. There's definitely something going on with that mask. And also, the Freddy figure has suddenly turned into a balloon boy figure. Maybe that's just a small easter egg where the figure, you know, switches different characters depending on you know, just a random number generator. Or maybe it's another customizable feature where you get to pick and choose different, you know, figures, maybe even plushies and other toys you can have on your desk. This is a look at the left side of the office and the lights turned on. You can see a light button that wasn't there in the video. So it looks like to flash the lights in the hallway outside of the outside of your door in the blind spot, you have to press a physical light button. And the panel on that button has three lights, green, orangey, yellow, and I'm assuming red. Once again, maybe if you use it too much, or maybe if you're using too many electrical themed, you know, mechanics at the same time, maybe one gets like short circuited or something. I, I'm not entirely sure. Moving on, this is a look at a different UI. This might be the classic UI, if I'm remembering the name correctly. So you can see all of the elements of the UI now feature a, a theme similar to the classic FNAF 1 style. The cameras, the time, the night, the power meter, the power percent, all very similar to the UI we see in classic FNAF 1. And it looks like the UI not only affects the cameras, but also some of the mechanical elements in the office. You can see this is still the classic UI, and the door and light buttons have, you know, matched that classic UI feel that FNAF 1 had. Also, once again, the figure on the shelf has changed. It's now Dee Dee from FNAF World coming back in Ultimate Custom Night. So that's a third figure it seems like we can have on the shelf. But yeah, just that small touch of the UI of the office changing as well to match the, the theme that the player set. That is such a nice touch. I freaking love that. This is the old school UI, and you can see, once again, 
just how much changes when you select a different UI. Not only does everything have that super old like Windows aesthetic to it, but also the camera feed is now in black and white. Such, such nice attention to details. Phil, you're doing a freaking amazing job with these UIs. Next image, we take a look at Cam 2, which looks to be some sort of storage area behind the main stage. You can see a bunch of cleaning products, a lost and found box, and also poster, a ripped missing person poster, as well as some of the trash and the gang members. You can see Mr. Hugs, you can see Mr. Can Do, I think's the name of the balloon. Bucket Bob is on the shelf. Number one crate is also on the shelf, and I think, uh, where's Pan Stan? We're missing Pan Stan. I can't see him, but I'm, I'm hoping and I'm praying that Pan Stan is in that camera feed somewhere. Next image is another look at the West Hall. And interestingly enough, the icon for Cam 9A that we've selected is purple. So once again, more customizable options for the color of certain things like the camera feed, you know, icons. Now this is the final image. This is one of those camera feeds that I said, hey, Pay attention to this, we're gonna need some info on this camera later on in the video. That's now. Have you noticed what's changed? The fuse box is open. The panel only has two lights on now. It also has another bar on the right side that has three yellows and a red. So clearly, something's going on that either the animatronics are malfunctioning our power system, or the player themselves is able to maybe interact with the panel and fuse box through the camera feed. I think it's going to be interesting if some of the characters, you know, some of the animatronics can go into the electrical room and mess around with our power supply. And I'm assuming some of the bars and lights we saw on like the doors and the lights in the office affect what goes on in the electrical room with the lights, with the fuse box, you know, with the panel, all that stuff. But that was our update on FNAF Plus. Oh my god, dude, it looks so, so good! Phil also briefly mentioned that a Steam page maybe is a possibility sometime soon. Basically, Phil was on this huge break from social media for like, I want to say two months. I don't know exactly the length, but it was a pretty long time. And he came back on the last day of May saying anything happened while I was gone. Wanted to come back with a surprise Steam page for FNAF Plus, but you know, some opportunities are too good to pass up. So maybe sometime in the near future we can actually see a Steam page for FNAF Plus. That would be super exciting to see. And speaking of Steam pages, I feel like a fanverse game just recently came out with a Steam page. Now I am probably going to do a whole separate video dedicated to the Steam page for Pop Goes Arcade. Just because it released a whole bunch of new info and footage for the game. But I'm going to throw it in quickly at the end of this video. Pop Goes Arcade, a official fanverse game, now has a Steam page. Like I said, a whole bunch of new footage and content. It, right now it has a release date of July at some point. But if you want to go wishlist it, I'll leave it as a link down in the description below. Well, that's going to do it for this update on FNAF Plus. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.